Hey everyone of you out there, my friends and people we know, I am very uh, nervous but also excited at the same time to do this video. This is uh, a very, very special video. I, I, I will now say it as it is uh, for the first time that we are in America, as some of you know, but we are seeking asylum. And that is not a small thing to seek asylum because of religious and pos uh, political persecution and, and other persecution. And I'm actually one of the first one from Europe, uh, sad to say, I don't think I'm the last one, but I'm one of the first one from Europe who are seeking asylum in America. So our case is very, very special. And, and the last half year have been very, very special. I have never in my whole life imagined I should experience anything like we have done the last year. I'll just show a picture here of my case. You can see there is a lot of paper. I can also put it in where you can see it. And this is copy sent to different places. So this is my case, my asylum case. And it's not a small decision to, to leave your country and go to another place to seek asylum. And I want to, in this video, tell in more detail what had actually happened and, and what I'm going to say now is something I've never shared public before and I'm actually a little worried a little nervous to share this video but I, I want you to know my heart I want you to know what we are going through I want you to understand what is happening in Europe right now because I don't think I'm maybe the first one who was seeking asylum in America but I, I am really not the last one who's going to do it and I also have a message for people who live in America. So it's going to be a little long video, but I really hope you will, you will listen to all of it and, and follow me in this. First, to go back to some of the things uh, that have happened. I want to say I've been doing ministry in Denmark for around 20 years. I've been on national TV over 20 times in different programs. And I've never had any issues with media and so on. And I've been praying for people and casting out demons and telling about Jesus for years. And I never had any issues. If I look at Denmark, there have been a lot of bad stories of ministries who have gone wrong. There is people who have had affairs. There is people who have, have sexual misbeliefs and have got uh, judged by court and have left the country because of that and there is a lot of bad stories that have been going on in Denmark and I have been trying to um, to really make an example of of something that is pure and holy this is my heart so I've been looking and follow what have happened and 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 had like okay we will not do the same mistakes but then suddenly everything went wrong um, what happened was that Danish TV uh, two different TV stations was contacting me who want to do a, a, a documentary about me. And then another TV station, you know, the biggest TV station in Denmark contacted me and I know the journalist for some programs many years ago and he seems genuine and real. So I said yes to him. And he wanted to do a documentary where he was following me and the last reformation. And in the letters to me, he wrote that there is a lot of life that's been changed and people are meeting God in the last reformation. And you have something different to give than the Lutheran state church. And we want to tell those stories. And I was like, okay, let's do that. But they had agenda, a totally different agenda. So Danish TV was following us from one and a half year and they were in London with me to a big kickstart meeting we had with 800 people and they have been following us all over. What I did not know was that there was a, a big, big agenda to really destroy us. And I did not know that there was some laws that was being changed at the same time. What I did not know that there was some people, who a group who were persecuting us who at the same time contacted the TV and they all came together and it became a mess. So the 2nd of January, they started the first TV programs on national TV and understand that there is a half million people who are watching out of 6 million. So it's 10% of Denmark who are watching those programs. But then it keep go coming on TV and different stations and it came on in newspaper and it just took off. 
And what they really managed to do was take all of those bad cases, uh, also where people have been judged and have really done sexual misuse and done other things, and then mixed it all together. So people had no idea who was doing what and so on. So suddenly I got a lot of threats like, Torben, you have misused those, you have done this, you have done this, and you have done this, and you should go to jail, and you have done this. And I was like, no, no, it, it was not me, it was them, and it was that, and, and it was that network, and it was those people. And, and, and I just started to get a lot of threats. Together with the three programs, it, 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 it went all over in Denmark. Um, I was in in three weeks, I was on national TV over 10 times. I was in the news almost like many, many times. I was on live TV in the news. They came and set up a camera at Autisa Center in Denmark and I was on live TV. And uh, and I was on the front page of a newspaper and people were talking about it and it just went crazy. And it was very, very bad. It, it was very bad programs and, and the way they put it up. And I would say that the 9th of January is a day I, I sorry. 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 9th of January was a day I never forget. I did this show, the, the trailer for the, the last program, and I, I saw people I had known before who had worked with us, who actually went out and, and lied and, 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 and stayed, put, <laughs> put a knife in my bag. And the program was, the, the trailer that was very, very bad. And, and when I saw that, I was like, no one would ever trust me again. No one would ever trust me again. No one would ever listen and believe what, what I stand for. Sorry. And it was hard. It was, it was, it was hard to be put on, on national TV like that. Sorry. I didn't expect this. But it was, it was hard. And, and I, it was like, Suddenly everything became dark, and I was like, I'm just finished, I'm, I'm finished in Denmark. And I've been trying, look, I've been trying very, very hard to, to live holy. I have a very high standard of myself. I've been seeing where I've gone wrong in other ministries, and I'm trying to say like, This should not happen with me. This should not happen with the last reformation with what I am with because I really fear God and, and I have done nothing wrong. And then suddenly see you said put up like that. It was very, very hard. And I was thinking at that time, like, can Jesus really change it? Can can he come and and make this good again? <laughs> But what happened already the same evening? Something happened. Uh, we had a meeting at the Jesus Center with a good friend from Australia, David, who was there and listened. And he was he was sharing about the suffering of Christ and shared about how Jesus learned obedience through his suffering. Hebrew 5 is saying that that even he was the Son of God, Jesus needed to learn obedience through his suffering. And, and if we take time to really meditate on that, that he needed to learn obedience and how through his suffering. And he talked about that, that we, the Bible talked about that we take part in Christ's suffering and that pain, suffering, bring people together in a special, special way. Like, Even more than good things, suffering do it in a special way. Like if two people have been in an army and they have lost a friend in an army, they maybe not been in the same army, in the same war, like in the same war, but when they meet each other, because they have gone through the same pain, 
they can relate to each other in a way other people don't understand. Like if a, if a mom have lost a child, people who have not lost child can never really relate to them. But those who have lost a child, they will have a stronger connection than anyone else because they know the pain, they know the suffering. And that day was very, very hard. And I was out praying. And the head just came to me like, I have not experienced anything. Jesus haven't experienced. Jesus, he was put naked on a cross in front of everyone to see. And everyone was mocking him. Everyone was shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And that night, something happened in me. It was very hard, but it was at the same time very special. And, and I felt like Jesus knew, knew about what I went through. Nothing, nothing we go through, he had not experienced himself. <laughs> and already that night, I felt so much closer to him. I felt different. Something had changed. I could relate to Jesus. I could relate to his pain. And I know he could relate to my pain. <laughs> And it became actually a very special moment for me. It became a, a evening I will never forget. And that night I was walking and praying. And I felt strength. I felt strength in that. And I felt like, yes, I can rejoice. I can rejoice as Peter's, his, Peter's letter, Peter's saying in my suffering. Because I know this is going to bring something good. <laughs> So, so here was the first thing, and persecution just it just keep going, it just keep going, and and it became more and more in the end when when we actually had people from our school when they were out on the street to evangelize, people took pictures of them, contacted the local news, and suddenly we were on the TV again one two times, and rumors and and people really trusted everything we are doing. And I was like, what is happening here? And it just became more and more crazy. And I saw how everything... Uh, yeah, it, it, just, it just became more and more. In the middle of all of that, I saw that things was more organized than I thought. Um, I saw politicians standing on national TV in the news and talking about my name. Politicians talked about how I need to be investigated by po police. And I was already guilty. And, and it was very special because there was one case, just example, one out of many. We had a kickstart in, in London where where there was 800 people people got baptized set free from demons healed we were out on street we had a lot of teaching a lot of things happen and one time there was a boy who had autism he was there and he saw some baptists and he wanted to go in the water and swim together with those people who were baptized but his mom took him beside and said no you're not allowed but he took down his trousers because he wanted to go and swim and the mom said, no, you're not allowed to swim. And he became angry and crying and hysteria. And that boy, he was so angry and crying with his pants down because he was not allowed to go swimming. Danish TV was filming that. And then they were filming deliverance that happened further away in another room and other places and filmed that. And then they put it all together in a trailer saying that Kids are getting traumatized at my meeting because they see deliverance and how this is mental violence. And I try to contact TV and I try to say this is not what happened. And, and we, we have never got one complaint for kids who have seen deliverance. Not one time. I, I, I know journalists have problem with it. I know religious people have problem with it. But I never seen kids have problem with it. And also when you see a deliverance, there is times of course where it's, it's hard and there is the battle. But then there is the, the joy that Jesus has set them free. And, and everyone who sees deliverance, they see the power in the name of Jesus. And they rejoice over the freedom. They never showed one freedom on national TV. Never. They only showed just that moment, those seconds where the deliverance was taking place. And then they clapped it together with kids who were watching and that guy who was standing with his pants down and crying and saying that he was traumatized. And it was just all over the news. 
It was all over the news, and they talked about kids and how kids had been misused. And it was hard. Um, I love kids a lot. Uh, my wife knows, and I, I love kids. I have two grandkids. I love kids. And and to suddenly be put in a bad light, like we are the reason that people are being traumatized. And, and I was like, what is going on? And it just keep week by week, the first three weeks. And then I heard about the new law. I also say first we, we have undercover journalists who have been at meetings and pretended to be Christian and pretended to confess sin, but it was just a lie. Uh, and it was hard for everyone who was part of it to experience that lie because we, we all feel misused by, by, uh, by those people. Like, how can you lie? How can you do that? Where's the fear of God? Um, but then I heard about the law. That there was two laws that was going to be changed. One is, is a mental violence law, where f physical violence and mental violence have the same, same punishment. And one is a, a court case, a children court case, where they can go and, and remove the, the, the family, the kids for the family, if they have a reason that there is something wrong. And when I heard about this, I saw that people who read, read about the laws and know what was going on, they started to contact us and say, Tommy, you need to leave. Sorry, come on. I did not expect this, but I wanted to just do an honest video. And there I, I, we, we had like, it's time to leave. So we, uh, we bought a ticket the 24th of January. And uh, we left two days later to America. And it was very hard, it was very special. I often say it's, it's one thing to read about it, it's one thing to hear about it, it's something else when you suddenly stand in it and experience it yourself. And, and we came here and uh, I want to say that it's not because people are speaking bad about me, I left. Uh, I, uh, we, we can handle that. Uh, but it was hard, but, but also when, when it came to the kids and we know that that they, they can come and take away the kids from one day to another now uh, with this new law. And, and we have this, it was so clear that this prosecution was so organized. Some of the people who was on the TV, Nelson TV, talking against us, they, they were writing to me private at the same time and send, sending threats to me. So they were writing to me and threatening me, and at the same time they were also national TV and telling a totally different story. Uh, and it was very special. Um, we came to America. I fasted actually the whole of January. I didn't eat uh, the, the month of January. Uh, and I would say we had also maybe some paranoia when we came to the airport and left. It, it was hard. It was very hard. We, we felt everyone was after us. We know it's not everyone, of course. Um, but you have to understand, it had the government, like we, we had, i written down here, we had the last year so many different uh, entities who have been coming after us. The fire department have come after us because they heard that 
uh, there was problem with there could be the risk of fire now the center but everything was okay the food controller they after us because they have heard that there was rots running around in our kitchen but everything was okay f3 is our work association was after us because they heard we have people working without prosecutors without papers everything was okay the police was after they came and checked all pa- passport of, of the the people of the school because they heard that we have immigrant like illegal people there but everything was okay the the tax association was after us and we should send papers to them the last two years with all thing and everything was okay the uh, municipality is called I think the city hall or what is called was after us they have been there several times we have done homeschooling with our daughter because we have been traveling a lot and then just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and want to check everything, and 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 the, and we we just saw like every kind of government just came, and then with with all of this TV that came, and I saw how I was already guilty. I saw like no matter like I know I have a good case, I know I can prove it, but I'm like I was guilty in people's eyes. And it's interesting, like when you look at Jesus, he came to Jerusalem and everyone was singing Hosanna in the highest and was worshipping him. And three days later, everyone was standing and shouting, crucify him, crucify him. I was surprised, like it, could, it changed so fast. And, and when persecution happened like this, you know, Peter said to Jesus, I will never deny you. But when it became very hot and the pressure was there, he denied Jesus three times. And if people would deny Jesus because of this, how much more will they not deny us? And it was what we experienced when it really came pressure on. There was people I knew who just went out and stabbed me in the back. And the Danish Free Church Network, they're like, no, I have, we had nothing to do with Tom and he's wrong. And, and everyone was just was in their own hands. And it was it was very hard. Not the people close to us at the Jesus Center. We we were family, and 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 it was beautiful. Um, but we came to America, and as soon as landing in America, like okay, now I can eat again, and and we are there. And um, we stayed in 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 a, in a home with people in West Palm Beach with some friends we knew there. And. Uh, uh, and it was hard. Um, after we left here, we, we emptied out. We lived at the Jesus Center and, and, and we, we started to close down because we, we couldn't have the center anymore and it's now closed. And it cost a lot of money to close it down because we, yeah, we, yeah, we need to close in a bad time and, and, and close the organization and it's now closed. And it had been very, very hard. Um, but when we came here, we also saw God's hand in it. And I would say, we have really seen God's hand in a way that has been very, very special. One testimony is that when we came here, we were staying in a home, West Palm Beach, and we were alone without our friends at home. We stayed with some friends and and we didn't have any money. Uh, we didn't have a place to stay. We didn't have a car and we didn't know what to do. And then one day they, they walked in our apartment in, at the Jesus Center and they had to empty it. So we were on Skype and they were walking around and saying, Hey Tom, hey, can I get you a bed? Hey, can I get you a sofa? <laughs> Sorry. And it was hard. And we were like, yeah, just take, take our bed, take our sofa. Take our pictures. My parents died last year, and I had some souvenir things for them, and I just, just take it. And it was it was hard, and we were crying, my wife and me. But uh, it's special. <laughs> you can. You cannot imagine it. To just give away everything. And we gave away it all. Once we have a few things we got stored in another place, but we gave it away. But but there God came.
in that moment, I got an email. Somebody wrote to me. Hey Tom, do you need some money to rent a house? Or something. And I was like, and there was a phone number. I thought, nice, somebody knew we were here and know what was going on. So, so I called that person and I said, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, as you know, we are in America. And that person replied, I asked first, hey, hi, do I know you? I said, no, no, I got baptized in one of your meetings, but not by you and we have never talked. But I just felt like you sent an email and asked if you need some money. And I said, yeah, as, as you know, we are in America. And he said, what, are you in America? Yeah, we, we left Denmark because of persecution. Did you leave Denmark because of persecution? Yeah, we are in Florida. Are you in Florida? And I'm like, yeah, have, have you not followed what have happened? He said, no, no, I'm not on Facebook and YouTube and all of that. I did not know. Oh, okay, but we're actually in West Palm Beach. Are you in West Palm Beach? Yeah, and, but, but I actually have to go out the door now because in 15 minutes we need to leave. We are going to Fort Lauderdale because I need to fly to Dallas. Are you going to Fort Lauderdale? I'm living in Fort Lauderdale just beside the airport. I will meet you in the airport and I will help you. Okay, thank you. And I, I put the telephone on and I'm like, what was that? Like he had no idea what was going on. And we had to go, so we, we jumped in the car and drove with some friends that drove us to Fort Lauderdale to the airport. And there when we came with a suitcase and that guy came, I've never seen him before in my life. And he said, I cannot believe you are in America. I cannot believe you are here. I knew nothing about it. And he gave me a hug and then he put some paper in my pocket. And we said bye bye and so on. And then I took the suitcases and I checked in to fly, fly to Dallas. And when I stood there with the suitcase, I took the papers out of my pocket to see what he had put in my, my pay pocket. And there was a check of $50,000. $50,000 from a guy I've never talked with in an airport in Fort Lauderdale while I stood there. And she'll check in. And I'll just say, we, we have seen God. We have seen God in all of this have taken care of us. And we have many testimonies to share. And, uh, and, and they have been so special. We then have been living in a house uh, for some time in Florida. And uh, I was waiting to what to do with the papers and all of that. And I would say asylum was the last thing we wanted even there because asylum means that we, we cannot come back to Denmark again for a long time. And we actually don't know what it means. And we actually don't know if we come back to Europe. We actually don't know what it means exactly because it's not so often somebody seek asylum like we do from, from, Euro from Europe, from Denmark. <laughs> Um, and the first time we had some meetings, we talked about maybe just take religious visa, working visa, something, and hope that everything would just fall down and be quiet again so we could come back. Uh, but then the laws came in first uh, March and uh, first of April, around there. And, and something else happened, something I cannot say here, something crazy, like I've never imagined that before. A bad, like somebody really tried to attack us. But I saw God, like I've never seen before, how he organized, how he spoke, how he saved us. For that it was, yeah, I cannot say that. But suddenly uh, with the papers and uh, is that things that happen and, and the new laws, I just knew like, this is not going to stop. If, if I would be back in Denmark, they would put me to jail. And I, 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 I've said I've lost all confidence in, 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 in the system. And it's hard, like I have my Danish passport here. 
And I've always been proud of being Danish. I've always been proud of having my Danish passport because uh, because uh, they're my good country. And I, I've never imagined that 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 I should lose all hope <laughs> in Denmark like this. But the new law came and, and I saw in the Danish parliament, I have a picture of it here. There was Stanion talking about me. And in the Danish par parliament, they were talking about this new law called mental violence law, that, that mental violence and physical violence have the same punishment. But physical violence is easy to say, like when it happened, because there is blue mark, it's physical, you know it happened. Mental violence is more, very difficult to define. When is it mental violence? And they had discussion on Danish, on, 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 on in Denmark about if you ground your kids for a longer period of time, that is, that could be mental violence. And of course, if you have kids, who think they're homosexual or something that and you as born again parents go against your kids and say no you are not a girl you're a boy you're not a boy you're a girl and really that could be mental violence of course and you know with the new law is mental violence gives three years jail but also with the new court case they will they can come from one day in order to take away the kids but they were talking about these programs and talking about me and talking about the boy who are peeing in his pants and said that yeah we have all seen these programs and we say that we should add to this law that mental violence is to cast demons out of kids or handicap or cast demons out in front of kids and handicap people. And uh, when the law came out, I have the law here from the Danish parliament, this is the law. And there is one thing that is at one thing they have committed to define what mental violence is. And that is to cast out demons. Or kids, handicapped people or in front of kids and handicapped people. That law have not been there. <laughs> if that thing had not been there if it had not been because of me and the programs. Like, we have a total secular country. No one believes in deliverance. And I've never had any complaint. And then suddenly, it's in the law. I'm in the law. And I know that they're not going to stop. They have written this law, they have added me to this law, and there's focus on me, and they talked about it. And if I go back to Denmark, yeah, they will, because new law, take me to jail. And we cannot live there because they could take away our kids. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <sighs> so we knew it was, it was, it was asylum. And uh, we, we, we applied for asylum and and you can see our papers again. There's a lot of papers here. But what is special with this case is everything is so documented because because we, we have everything written down and it happened public and I have got email, I've got threads, I can document how they all came and it's a very special case. And I feel at the same time God, he said that that I'm, I'm just one of the first one from Europe and it's a very important case because we are going to help other people later. Then I had a friend in, in, in Latvia, I love Arunas, a guy we let to God some years ago, he, he don't knew nothing about this, he, he got a dream about me, where he, a like, dream about him, also where he dreamt he was persecuted and the enemy was after him. And then he came to me in a big, big white house. <laughs> And when he came to me in the White House, he was saved. The enemy could not touch him. And God started to speak, and, and, and I believe that, that persecution will come to Europe. And we already see now that in Norway, in Germany, in Holland, and other places, they are starting to change the law and do similar things. We see in Australia, there's things happening right now. We see a guy in Canada who got arrested. 
and I just know this is what is coming. <laughs> and I also believe if it comes to America, now, nowadays a grace in America right now, but but things are also changing here. I just want to say persecution is just part of it. And we and Jesus said if the persecution in one city moved to the next, if the persecution in one country moved to the next. <laughs> And, and it was what we did. And uh, so we seek asylum and uh, we have done that now. And we don't know what will happen. Uh, we don't know if it will take three months before I get an interview and get told what, what will happen. But it will also get two years, it will take three years. And it have been very special in, in, in this waiting period and, and did not know what to do. As soon as we, we send in the papers for the asylum, I, I fasted again. I fasted 40 days. And I experienced a crazy spiritual attack. Like I've never done before. And and fear fear came. Uh, fear of dying. Suddenly I haven't been afraid of that since I gave my life to God, but suddenly fear came in. And I think with all of the things that was going on. I say I, I feel I'm strong and we have gone through many, many, many crazy things with God and I could tell many stories. But it just came to a new level. But we are fasting 40 days and praying and seeing God and fear just came and I, I, I really came on attack. And I became, I felt I became sick. Um, really on attack and, and had like thought I, I was going to die and I, I told Lena and like Lena I, I feel I'm, I'm dying I, I'm, I'm going to die and it happened under the fast and after the fast and, and a few weeks ago it just became more and more and I felt like we were in a war we were in a battle and and um, And I became sick. I felt I felt I became sick, and suddenly I couldn't breathe. Suddenly I felt in my body, physical also. I felt I couldn't breathe anymore. And and my lung was, I felt like it was collapsing, and I could not breathe. And and I was like, what is happening with me? And I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't lay. I couldn't walk. And I'm like, what what is happening here? And I actually ended up three weeks ago in a hospital. And the doctor checked me and they were actually nervous that I had punctured my lung because I didn't breathe through almost with one lung. And I was sitting at the hospital and, and I was sitting, try, sat like this up and tried to breathe and, and it hurt so much. And I couldn't breathe. And I was like, God, what is happening? I didn't come to America to die now. You didn't bring us to America to do this and to die. And it was interesting because I want to add one half a year ago, we were in America and I felt like God wanted us to do some work in America. But I also say I got a little cold feet, but you know how persecution God can use this. So we felt persecution brought us, but at the same time, we knew God brought us here to do something. And I was sitting in a hospital like, not brief and I was like oh what is happening and that night at the hospital I was sitting and I, I was supposed to go to West Palm Beach the day after at two o'clock at six o'clock in the morning six thirty we were supposed to leave we are in Orlando now and we were supposed to leave there and I was sitting at two o'clock in the hospital and I couldn't breathe and I was sitting there with all the things and, and, and this said I had water, not in my lung, but beside my lung and my rib, there was a lot of water that pressured the lung, so I couldn't breathe. And I was sitting there and said, God, 
God, you have done it before. I've seen you so many times. And you are going to do it again. We have done it. We are going through many things together, God. And I'm reminded our other attack I had some years ago where I was very also on the attack. And God, he came and changed everything. And I'm like, God, you can do it again. And suddenly something changed. I got some medicine and so on, but I felt I can breathe again, I felt better. I got a lot of painkillers and so on, and I went home. I was home at 3 o'clock in the night or 3 in the morning. And I went to bed and I woke up. I slept 3.30, I woke up 6 o'clock after two and a half hours. And I'm like, let's go to West Palm Beach. Let's go, Lena. And she looked at me, are you ready? Yeah, let's go. And we went the whole day. And I didn't have pain. I felt something in my body was moving, but no pain. And it just, it, it felt something have changed. And I didn't take any painkillers. I, ha I hadn't taken any painkillers. I got any of them. And it was just a, a war attack. A few days later, we, I still feel something was happening in body. I didn't have pain. I could breathe again. But mentally, I felt really under attack. I felt like, what is happening? And we had a mini kickstart. Uh, and I, I, it was so hard. It was the hardest kickstart, the hardest meeting ever. I, I was so beside myself. But God came that night. I saw the strongest miracle in somebody. I think like there was a girl I prayed for. She fell down, got set free from anxiety. And then she got the Holy Spirit spoken tongues. Beautiful. In the same moment, the Holy Spirit fall on her mom and her, she had pain and disappeared. And then I prayed for her afterward, the mom. And she had probably the hips and all things and took the legs up and it was not the same length. And I prayed for the hips to go in order and suddenly one leg jump, and she broke down. And she was crying and crying and crying and she's, and she's I had peace, no pain, and she was crying, and she said, I'm numb, I cannot feel my body from my stomach and down, I feel nothing. And she felt like a wave of the Holy Spirit was moving all over her lower part of the body. And she, she it, it just continued and continued. When the meeting was over, she still couldn't walk. So they actually took her and carried her out in the car and drove her and carried her into the hotel. She couldn't walk. Those waves of the Holy Spirit over her body continued to 3 o'clock in the morning. And when she stood up, she was completely healed. I think I have written down what I have it here. And she was healed, totally, completely healed from a very rare spine tumor disease. A torn gluteus maximum. That was the, something with the muscle that was torn away from the bones or body. Uh, something like that. And, and damaged bladder. She couldn't go to the toilet. She couldn't pee. And ruptured disc. And she was completely healed for everything. She could go to the toilet. She could pee. She could walk. She could do everything. And it was a very, very powerful testimony and I was together with her a few days ago and heard the whole testimony and everything how it happened it was it is beautiful and we were together yesterday again and God had just in the middle of my weakness in the middle of I couldn't do anymore we just saw the Holy Spirit in a way we haven't done before I want to say that that same night when I prayed for her I came home I felt so attacked but the next morning when I woke up, like when she woke up and she was healed, the next morning I woke up and I felt now is leaving. Now the attack that had been going on for several months is leaving. And God started to speak to me of Mark 10. Jesus said, everyone who have left father, mother, sister, brother, feels for my name's sake. When they experience hundredfold in this life to get a persecution and eternal life. And I just felt like faith, faith started to rise up in me. And I felt we have lifted it all. But now the battle is over. 
now we can move on. And I felt God said, now I can do this video. Also because God, I, I have felt betrayed, I have felt hurt, but God has really dealt in me personal and taken the pain out, the hurt out. I'm, I'm different. We, we are changed. God has changed us. I have experienced, I, I don't think ever I've been so close with Jesus as I've been now in this time. Uh, it has been very, very hard, but it has been very, very strong at the same time. I've been fasting a lot, I've been praying a lot. I've been with Him. It has been a very humble experience. Uh, but very good and I want to say that God is faithful I want to say persecution is not our enemy no matter how hard it is Jesus learned obedience through his suffering and we need to learn obedience through our suffering and we need to die die to this world so we can live for him and the last half year I have just been a person walked that has been very very powerful for me it been very strong and now I look forward to also see the fruit of it even more, see what will come out of it. We feel it's time to start senders in, in America. Uh, we have looked at a center in North Carolina actually, near Charlotte, we had this crazy experience we had one week ago. And I look forward to share that testimony, I'll do that in another video. We don't have the sender yet, we don't have the money yet. But we believe God, he will send somebody and he will take care of that also. So now we are here. We, are, we, we feel it's time to move on. I don't know if I will get the interview in three months or two years, three years. I cannot travel out of America until I get the papers. So that means that we maybe go years before I can meet you in Europe and other people but now we are here in America and we focus on America and that is what we feel God wants us to do. And then about the future, about the papers, we are saying, look at the birds. Then don't worry, look at the birds. Then don't worry, look at the flowers. If God take care of the birds and the flowers, he will take care of us. And we don't know what that means. We don't know if our future will be in America. We don't know if our future will be other places, but we know that we are walking with Christ. To you who are living in Europe, don't be afraid of what happened with me. Be bold. Speak. Of course, be wise when it comes to what you put on YouTube. I don't think they will come after you right away. I, I see this, the law and this was focused on me. Uh, don't be afraid to speak with boldness. This life is so short, short and it's not about this life, it's about the kingdom, it's about obeying God, it's about walking with Jesus and he is with you in persecution. Maybe you don't feel it right away, but he is with you and this is real. And now I'm not crying because it's painful, I'm crying because it's strong. He is real, this is real. So be bold. I would say God is raising up many strong people in the last reformation. Also in Europe, we have like our leadership group and we are sharing a lot and we are very close. And what I miss most is, is you guys. I miss the people at the Jesus Center. It was, I've never experienced family like that before. And I really miss those people. And I really look forward to get a center here in America, to start training schools in America. Hopefully we can already start in a few months. What can you do? Pray for us. Pray for Europe. Pray for when it comes to the persecution. We are going into a special time. And I'll say to people in America, I have a message for you. God has put it in my heart and I'm going to share that later. But I, I came here not only because of persecution, I really God used persecution also to bring me here. And I have a message and something I'm going to do. And it's very special and I really look forward to, to, to see how it will look like. Um, 
pray for us. If you are know some politicians that could help our case, that would be good, because it's a very special case. Uh, and then if there is maybe business people or people with influence who also want to help with senders and other things, let us know. Uh, yeah. Sorry, the, the, I didn't expect to, to be so emotional. I would say God is faithful. And I'm so thankful to finally get this out and say that this is where I am. I have got invitations to Australia, to Europe, to Canada, to Brazil and everybody. And right? I ask Tom, are you coming? Are you coming? And I, I could only say, no, I'm not coming. I could not tell the story. For now, I was able to tell the whole story or some of the story. <laughs> So I thank Jesus and thank God for this. He's faithful. And my wife is doing good. Lena, she's a strong woman. Oh, she has gone through a lot also. It's not have not been easy for her. But God has given me an amazing woman. And she know that it costs to follow Christ and we have decided to follow him and we have decided, decided, decided to live this life. And uh, of course, we miss our son and daughter-in-law, they're in France right now, and our grandkids, and it's not easy and all of that. Uh, but everything works for good for those who love him. And I want you to be encouraged, like Paul, he was in jail, and he and other people got strength through his persecution to preach the gospel. And this is what I want to say to you. Yes, persecution are going to come to all of us. But Jesus has promised that he's with us. He has promised through the suffering that he's with us. And through the suffering, through suffering come death to ourselves and our flesh. So we can live more for him. And he is real. And the testimonies, I just shared two testimonies here about the, the money that was put in my pocket in the airport. I shared the testimony of the healing. I saw the Holy Spirit came and the miracle we saw. But, and, and, and God, he healed me for the hospital and all that. But I have so many more testimonies I would be able to share because in all of this, God had been faithful. So thank you for seeing this video to the end. I want to encourage you, read the book of Acts. Read the gospel. See the life they're living. Jesus, when he sent us out, he promised us persecution. He sent us out as she, she, a lamb and one wolf. And we see it in the book of Acts that persecution is part of serving Christ. But in all of this, he is there. Jesus is real. So thank you for seeing this video. I encourage you to follow The Last Reformation, follow our newsletter. I will keep you updated what is happening. And, and, uh, and look forward to see you in America. Look forward to, uh, to see what God wants to do. So we, we are looking at the center right now. If you want to be part and help with it somehow, let us know. And then uh, I will still keep a little low in days, some things I, I cannot do before I get my working permission. And then about the asylum, God knows if, my, if I will only be in America a few years or I will be here for a longer time or what we have, I don't know, God knows. God bless you all out there. Thank you for seeing this different and personal video. Uh, keep close to Jesus, take up your cross and follow him. He is real. And, and, and it's not about this life, it's about him, he is life. God bless you. Bye-bye.